Hello everybody, Martin here and welcome to this new tutorial on my channel. Today we will learn how to export animations from Marvelous Designer to Blender, which is actually something that you wanted to learn ever since I released my first Marvelous Designer tutorial. And I finally figured it out, so I want to share the technique with you. It's actually a technique that the authors of the Witness short film that you know from Netflix used. And I will show you how to easily use it yourself in your own projects. So let's get to it. This time let's make things a bit faster since I do not want to waste your time. So first things first, I have this character here in Fuse. You can find a tutorial for using this software on my channel as well as in the description below this video. I customized it, then exported it as OBJ and imported it to Mixamo without textures. Because from some reason, when I want to download Collada format these days from Mixamo, it just doesn't let me download it. The connection always times out. And Adobe doesn't really want to do anything about it since they want to discontinue Fuse this summer. Yep, you heard me right. Fuse will be erased by Adobe in September 2020. So I guess download all you can while you can. Bloody hell Adobe. Anyway, all you need to do to fix this problem is import your exported OBJ from Fuse, set these joints and let Mixamo rig it. Then download the Collada format without textures and of course apply the textures later directly in Blender, which we've already learned in the original tutorial. Then I just download the Collada file without textures from Mixamo. I import it like this and ha, huh, here's our animation. Very crudely, I just push the keyframes to the side at about frame 30. I go to frame one, reset the pose and key it. Then I prolong the animation. You can do that by looping it in graph editor or simply copy pasting frames like this. Set the end of the timeline where your animation ends. Don't forget to apply the rotation and then export the body and the armature as a lambic file. You can of course export all the parts of the character, but it's not really necessary. And if I'm too fast for you, don't worry, just watch the original Marvelous Designer tutorial for this. You can now open up the garment file we've made in that tutorial. And here, reset your garment here and then delete the existing avatar. Also, do delete these custom pins we've made in the previous tutorial. But leave the ones on the cloak. When that's done, just import your alembic format with the avatar. Change nothing here and hit OK. The garment may be a little low at this point, for when it starts simulating, it will probably just fall to the ground, so let's raise it. Also, freeze this cloak geometry before we are done with the clothing. Cool, some of you actually told me I should really flip these normals on the backside of the clothing. And yeah, thank you and you are absolutely right, but since I'm going to recalculate them in Blender later, I just don't. Instead, at this point, I hit this remesh option. It gives me mostly quads in the resulting geometry. Quads are good. And now let's just hit spacebar and let Marvels do its work here. <laughs> I never tire of this. But actually the sleeves go through the hands, so instead control Z and push both these parts closer. Then spacebar again and ha, huh, much better. In the fabric menu, let's now change the fabric type to something a bit different than we used last time, just to make the clothing a bit more rigid or more heavy when we later start animating it. Something like wool will do. Change the type of fabric on the clothing pieces as well, here on the garment and the backside and the cloak as well. Unfreeze the cloak. 
take this point that we have pinned to place in the simulation mode, move it so that it's on the front of the neck and play around with it a bit so that both these pin points are very close to each other. When you then select one of the pins and right click on it, a menu will pop up where you can choose to attach the pin or all the pins to the avatar. So choose all option and it will snap to it. We are doing this so that our pinned cloak actually stays with the character when it starts moving. And yeah, that's really it. You then just switch to the animation mode, which we've talked about in the original tutorial. And here, hit the big red button and watch it, how it nicely animates like this. Very cool, right? I just love the results. Then just hit Ctrl A and now about the export. Uh, at this point you are probably waiting for the big aha moment. You're probably expecting something very elaborate to make it work in Blender. Well, no. You just choose this Ogawa Alembic format. It sounds African and I have no idea what it means, but it's a faster and smaller Alembic format. And when you then import it to Blender and scale down the imported geometry, it just works. I mean, yeah, it looks weird, but to solve it, you just recalculate the normals with this mesh normals set from faces and then add a sub D modifier at a level of one. And that's just it. Of course, you want to figure out these places where the body goes through the fabric. You can play around, for example, with these collisions here. The thickness one is just to make the fabric stay away from the avatar a bit more. And the render adds actual thickness to the cloth. And of course, you can always choose to lower this particle distance number to make your cloth simulation more detailed. But it's not really necessary here. And yeah, we got our clothing animation from Marvels to Blender. And I hope you can see all the possibilities this workflow gives you. So go ahead, make something like they did in the Witness short film, because that's exactly what they used. I mean, except for Blender. But Blender will soon be the leading 3D software anyway, so yeah, you have all the tools now. And if by any chance you're still not comfortable in Blender, don't forget, you can always get that CG Boost Blender Launchpad course by Zach Reinhardt, which will get you properly started. Of course, this Marvel's Designer miniseries is closely connected to the clothing texturing tutorial I've made a while back, where we will jump into Substance Painter with the garment we've created and texture some linen and its transparent edges there. One last shameless plug, I have a course on CG Boost 2. It's called Substance Painter Launchpad and it will take you from zero to hero in this software in no time. So you can consider it too. And all the links are of course in the description of this video. That's it, that was easier than you thought, right? So good luck and make something great, will you? Until next time, Martin out.